back court. And you don't want some song which we sing. Do you know that? Parama Karuna Bhavadijana? Yeah, some of you not. If you try to follow it, a simple Bengali song. Parama Karuna Bhavadijana Nithai Gora Thank 
Understand the meaning, then it will help us. It will help us to be Krishna conscious. So, 
This song describes the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Actually, not only Lord Chaitanya, but also Lord Nityananda. Because the song began, Parama Karuna Pahu Dvijana. Param supremely merciful. These two lords, Parama Karuna Pahu Dvijana, Nitai and Gorachandra means Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. They are supremely merciful. Sapa Avatara Sara Siramani Kevala Ananda Kanda. Then the song goes on to say that of all the avatars, of all the incarnations of Krishna, these two are the most merciful because they're giving a process which is simply joyful. Just joyful. Become very happy chanting the holy name, dancing. When we go for Rati Atras or when we have our Harinam, Sankirtan, we feel joyful. We feel happy. So this is the process given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda. You can see here the nice picture, Chaitanya and Nityananda, their arms up in the air and they're chanting and dancing. Sometimes Lord Chaitanya would be a sannyasi and he would travel around India, wherever he would go, he would chant and dance. Even when he went to places like Benares. Benares is not really a place for Vaishnavas. It's more the place for the Mayavadi, the followers of Shankara, Advaitavadis. And the Buddhists, they're there in Benares. But Lord Chaitanya would chant there also. He would go, even if he was alone, he would chant. He would just sing and dance and chant. And sometimes, sometimes people would come and join and chant with him. But in the beginning, Lord Chaitanya began the Sankirtan with Lord Nityananda. The two were together. Later on Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and he was, but still he continued to chant. Because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is introducing the Yuga Dharma. In every age there's a process for self-realization. There's a process by which we can become perfect. And in the Kali Yuga, it is said, Kali Yuga Dharm Harinam Sankirtan. In the Kali Yuga, the process to practice religion is the chanting of the Holy Name. Without chanting of the Holy Name, then you're not actually practicing the real principle of religion for this Kali Yuga. In other ages, there was also the chanting of the Holy Name, but there were other processes also. Just like in the Satya Yuga, people could do meditation, they had a long life, they could live for one lakh, one lakh years. And then in the next yuga, in the Trita Yuga, the life was reduced to 10,000 years. And the process was changed from meditation, it was changed to yajna, to do yajnas. Sometimes we do little yajnas when we have initiations perform a yajna, agnihotri, 
you have to know. But you need to have qualified brahmanas to chant the mantras. And in this age, people are not very qualified to chant the mantras perfectly. In the previous ages, people could chant the mantras very nicely and they could change, they could sacrifice the old animal and it would come out a new animal, a young animal. Just to show the power of the mantra, the brahmanas could do these things. But in the Kali Yuga, there are no real brahmanas to chant the mantras properly. People may say they are brahmanas. They may say they are uh, born in the brahmana caste. But actually, in the Kali Yuga, nobody really is the Brahmana by birth. They don't have the samskars. But they can practice. They, if they're properly initiated and trained, then they can become Brahmanas. But not just simply by birth. And Prabhupada would give the example that your father may be the high court judge. It does not mean that you're also a high court judge. Or your father may be doctor. It does not mean that you're also doctor. You have to go and study and become qualified. And then you can take that position. So in the same way, you want to be a brahmana, you have to have the qualities of the brahmana. And you have to work like a brahmana. Working like a brahmana. Sometimes we meet people who will say, oh, I'm a brahmana. But they're working in the job. They're working, maybe they're working in the big office, or maybe they're in the shop. They're running the shop. That's not the business of a brahmana. A brahmana's duty is to worship the deity and to teach others to worship the deity. Brahmanas can also study the scripture and they can teach the scripture. And brahmanas can also accept charity and they can give charity. Those are the six activities prescribed for a brahmana. So sometimes people will say, well, my grandfather, he was a pujari. <laughs> you know, they will say long ago in their family, they, they were brahmanas and they were worshipping the deity. But now what are they doing? Now they're working in the job. They have given up the Brahminical culture. They don't want to just sit and be a Brahmana. They say, no, no, I don't want to just ring the bell in the temple. I have to make some money. I have to do the, find the job and do the business and whatever. So that is not Brahmana. Brahmana is concerned for spiritual culture. He does not worry about his material situation. He will be satisfied with whatever is provided by the grace of Krishna. And you see examples of Brahmanas in the times of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There were wonderful Brahmanas, people like Srivas Pandit, Srivas Pandit, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda had many pastimes in the home of Srivas Pandit. And they would do kirtan always in the home, every night in the home of Srivas Pandit. So Lord Chaitanya said to Srivas one day, he said, you know Srivas, he said, how will you maintain your family? 
He said, you have a family, you're quite a big family, all your brothers and their wives and children, you're all there. How will you maintain yourself? What will you do if you don't have any money or any food? What will you do to maintain yourselves? And Srivast Pandit said, Oh my Lord, I will simply clap my hands three times. And if there is nothing, I will throw myself in the Ganga. <laughs> but by the grace of Lord, everything is provided. We have no scarcity. Of course, we should not be anxious for material prosperity and to enjoy opulence. We should be satisfied with whatever is provided by the grace of Krishna. That is the motive of the devotee. Just like another brahmana was Kolaveka Sridhar. Kolaveka Sridhar. His name was Sridhar, but he had some land with a few banana trees. And whatever income he got from his bananas, he would always use 50% to worship Mother Ganga. He would use half of his income to worship Mother every day he would do this. And Lord Chaitanya tempted him. Lord Chaitanya said to him, he said, ask some blessing from me. Lord Chaitanya actually, he sat on the throne of Vishnu and he called all the devotees to come and said, ask for some blessing. So Lord Chaitanya was revealing that he is the Supreme Lord and he's telling them, what blessing can I give you? Ask whatever you would like. Yeah. You want treasure? You want gold? You want land? Maybe you want more wives? <laughs> Some people. <laughs> Maybe you want to have, you know, some kind of uh, position in the society. But Sridhar said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, My Lord, why do you test me like this? I do not want anything. I am happy. Whatever income I get from my bananas, I spend 50% to worship Mother Ganga. And I'm happy, it's enough. Lord Chaitanya said, Sridhar, look, your cloth is old and ragged, and your house is broken down, there are holes in the roof, and your pot, your water pot, is just simply iron, it's the poorest material, metal. You're so poverty stricken. But Sridhar said, My Lord, I am happy. The bird lives in the nest, in the tree. And the king lives in the palace. Everyone is suffering and enjoying according to their past deeds. I, I can accept whatever is my destiny by the grace of God. Let me continue in my witness way. There are many nice devotees like that who have that mood. They're not anxious for material progress. They're more anxious to make spiritual progress, to go out of this world, back to God. So, we have to understand Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, they are the most merciful of all the avatars. How many avatars are there? Many, many. As many as there are waves on the ocean. 
If you go down to Port Dixon and you see the sea there, there's so many waves. There's so many avatars. And Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, they are the most merciful. So the song begins, Parama Karuna Parutrita. They're very merciful. And then the song goes on in the second verse. Bajo Bajo Bhai Chaitanya Nithai. Bajo Bajo Bhai means, my dear brother, worship Chaitanya and Nityananda. Here you can see on our altar, on the left hand side, we have the forms of Gaur and Nithai. And you're worshipping them. Bajo Bajo Bhai Chaitanya Nithai. Sutrita Vishwashakori, worship them with fixed mind, with concentration. Don't be diverted. Don't let your mind wander away. You know, in the material world, there's so many things to distract us. Mobile phones, right? Your mobile phone, a big distraction. When you're chanting japa, get away from your mobile phone. Put it away. Turn it off. And if you have a television, pull the plug out. Don't sit and try to chant with the television on. And if you have children, you want to chant before the children wake up. You have to get up early before the children and then you can chant. I know you because children need your time. When you want to chant, you have to be determined. You have to do it. Otherwise, your bhakti, your devotion is done in the mode of ignorance and passion. All right? Passionate ignorance, tamagun, rajagun. You can be doing puja, but you can be in tamagun and rajagun. Just because you're doing your puja doesn't mean you're transcendental. You have to consider what is the mood, what is the. So we have to be focused. You're going to worship Gornitai, Sudhrita Vishwashakori. Vishayi Chadiya Sehati Majiya Muki Bolo Hari Hari Vishayi Chadiya Throw away the Vishaya Vishaya Material enjoyment Get rid of that You know Your movies Now you've got 5G or 4G and 5G You're watching all the movies on your mobile phone You know don't get Too much attached to these things. You have to be very cautious. So, the song says, Vishaya Chadiya. Throw it away. Get rid of it. The Vishaya, the Maya, the thing, everything which is not in relation to Krishna. You have to put it aside. And what should you do? Vishaya Chadiya. Se Rase Majiya. Muki Bolo Hari Hari. Use your mouth to chant the holy names of the Lord. That is proper. In the uh, prayers at the beginning of the creation, the Shruti, Shruti Charas, they're offering prayers to Lord Mahavishnu and they're describing mm, how. The Lord created these senses. He gave us the senses. We are soul. We are not the body. The Lord gives us this body along with the senses and the mind and the intelligence. These are all given to us by the Lord. We are the soul and He gives us these things. But we're meant to use them for His service. We're not meant to waste them in material activities. The tongue, 
it's not meant to be used to just chant mundane songs, but we're meant to chant the holy name of the Lord. The tongue is not meant for prajalpa, it's meant for Krishna Kata. Not Gramya Kata, but Krishna Kata. So we have to use the tongue in the proper way. And use the tongue to taste prasad, not to taste the other garbage which is offered from all the other places, the fast food, whatever atrocities they're giving you. They give you so many garbage foods and people are eager to eat. So we are eager for tasting Krishna, the prasadam, almost to Krishna. Use the tongue in that way. Use the ears to hear about Krishna. Don't hear all the mundane gossip of the world. Just hear the topics of Krishna. There was a one devotee, he was a very clever man. He would never hear anything not about Krishna. But sometimes people would come and they would say things to him. Like one day somebody came to him and they said, What do you think about the government? And he said, Govardhan? <laughs> So this way he changed the topic very extra, you see. So when people come to ask you, what do you think about the government? Then you can say to them, Govardhan? Oh, Govardhan is so wonderful. Krishna is holding the Govardhan. Yeah, we're not much worried about the politics and the the, all the intricacies of the mundane world. We're only interested in Krishna and topics in relation to Krishna. So use the senses properly. Use the eyes to see the beauty of Krishna. And use our legs to come to temple so that Krishna can see us. We're given the legs so that we can walk in the holy places and that we can come to temple to see the deities. And not only to see the deities, but to be seen by the deities. The Lord is here and He has eyes. You can see Lord Jagannath. He has big eyes. And he can see all of us. And he's seeing each and every one of us. And he knows what we're doing. How much service are we offering? How much trouble are we taking to try to please him? To try to serve him? So we have to be conscious of these things. So then the song goes on. Deko Ari Pai Tri Bhuvaninai Emana Dayalada. That in the three worlds, three worlds, right? You say three worlds? Or only one world. No, three worlds. There's upper planet, there's a heavenly planet and there's the lower planet. Or you could say Bor Bhuva Swa. If you chant Brahma Gayatri on Bor Bhuva Swa. Swarga, heaven. Buloka, Bhuvarloka, Swargaloka. Three worlds. In the three worlds, there's no one more merciful than Chaitanya, Nityananda. Pashupati Jure, Poshanavidari, Suni Yara Gunaganda. Why is it? How can we say there's it's so much? Because even the animals were made Krishna conscious by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. Lord Chaitanya went through the Jarakanda forest and he got all the animals 
to chant and to dance. And the animals, even the animals were ferocious, but they became gentle by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he told them, chant the holy name, my dear tiger, get up and chant the holy name. And the tiger got up and embraced the deer like this and became gentle by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, don't try to imitate it. You know, we have the wild dogs out here, you know. You see, my dear dog, get up and get up. Nice dogs. So don't, we're not Lord Chaitanya. But, but Lord Chaitanya, he could do these things. And Lord Nityananda, he was merciful to the dog. You know the story that they were going to Jagannath Puri and the dog was following them. So the one devotee who was in charge, Shivananda Singh, he brought the dog with them and every day he arranged to give the dog prasadam. And the dog followed them all the way. One day, however, somehow they forgot to give the dog prasadam and then the dog disappeared. And Shivananda Singh felt so bad, he fasted. He wouldn't take prasadam because he thought, you didn't give the dog prasadam, how can I eat? But then when they got to Jagannath Puri, they saw the same dog who was there. And Lord Chaitanya was giving it coconut pulp. Coconut meat, the meat from the coconut. Right? You have dogs, you like dogs, you pick up, feed them the coconut meat. Don't feed them animal meat. Give them coconut meat. And the dog, the dogs are all vegetarian. So, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda are so merciful. Samsari majiya rohi lipadiya sepadi nahi oasa. Lutan Das Thakur, he says, he said that I must be a very sinful person. He said because everyone is attracted to this Sankirtan movement. But somehow I have no attraction. I must be punished. I'm being punished by Yamaraj, the god of death. He's punishing me by not allowing me to be attracted to this movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we have to understand the mercy of Sri Chaitanya. Many people, they may be devoted to Lord Krishna, but they don't all know about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Ch Lord Chaitanya's teachings are very important. What to speak of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there are many people, they don't even know about Lord Krishna. Just like when Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada first took the Gaudiya Vaishnava teaching into South India. They made a temple in Chennai. So when they were installing the deity there of Radha and Krishna, at that time, people came to Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada and they said to him, Oh Swami, Swamiji, why are you putting two-armed Krishna? You should put four-armed Krishna there. They did not understand that the two-armed form of Krishna is the supreme form. They were thinking, oh no, no, you should have four arm form, another Narayan, a Vishnu form, as in Vaikuntha. They did not appreciate that the two arm form of Krishna is the original form of the Lord. And it's that two arm form which is source of all the other forms, all the other incarnations, the form of Vishnu, they're all coming, it's all coming from the original form, which is the two-armed form of Lord Krishna, as he is in Goloka 
Vrindavan. And so they could not appreciate the beauty of the two-armed, three-fold bending form of Lord Krishna. They were so unfortunate. So we have to educate people to understand these things, that it is Lord Krishna who is the supreme form. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read the prayers by the personified Vedas, the Shruti Charas. And these prayers were told by Narayana Rishi to Narada Muni. Narayana Rishi lives in Badarik Ashram and he's eternally performing tapasya there in Badarik Ashram. You know Badarik Ashram in the Himalayas? In the Himalayas? Yeah. It's always covered with snow. You know? You find it hot here in Malaysia? Go to Badari Asha. Nice and cool. <laughs> Always covered with snow. So Lord Narayana Rishi resides there since the beginning of creation and he is doing austerities there. So Narayana Rishi, he told to Narada Muni the prayers from the personified Vedas, how the personified Vedas glorified Mahavishnu at the beginning of the creation. So when, after Narada Muni had heard these prayers, then Narada Muni offered obeisances to Lord Krishna. No, Narayana Rishi was surprised. He thought, you know, I'm your guru. You're offering obeisances to Krishna. Why are you offering obeisances to him? I'm your guru. But Narada Muni explained that it is Lord Krishna who is the origin of every all, all your, that you yourself, Narayana Rishi, and all the other avatars they're all coming from Lord Sri Krishna. It is Lord Krishna who is the origin of everything. Everything comes from Him. This is stated, of course, in Bhagavad Gita, in verses like uh, 10th chapter, text number 8, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Mata Sarvam Pravatate Iti Matva Pajantimam Buddha Baba Samasvata. So Lord Krishna said, I am the source of the material and spiritual world. The wise who know this will worship me with all their hearts. And similarly, Lord Brahma also says the same thing about Lord Krishna. He said, Ishvara Parama Krishna. Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karana Meaning that Lord Sri Krishna is the supreme controller and he has a form of eternity, bliss and knowledge. He is the origin of all origins and the cause of all causes. This is Lord Krishna's position. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's also stated, Eche Kamsa Kala Pumsa Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam Indriyani Vyakulam Lokam Mridayanti Yuge Yuge Eche Kamsa Kala Pumsa Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam That Lord Krishna is the Bhagavan Swayam. He is the original personality of Godhead. And all of these other expansions, all of these incarnations, they're all coming from Him. So Narada Muni understood this and this is why he offered his prayers to Narayana Rishi by glorifying Lord Krishna. 
Who is the original Bhagavan Swayam? And Lord Narayana Rishi is the expansion coming from Lord Krishna. So we, we want to understand Lord Krishna's position. It's very helpful for us. Why? Because by the grace of this transcendental knowledge, we can develop devotion for Krishna. We need to have some love for Krishna. Love for Krishna is shown by service. Prabhupada gives the example. He speaks about dharma. Sanatan dharma, right? Sanatan dharma. What is the meaning of this word dharma? He said, everything. Everything has its nature, just like the nature of sugar is sweet, and the nature of chili is hot, right? So the nature of the, the living entity is what? Krishna Das. Huh? Krishna Das. Krishna Das. Yes, service. Go to service. The nature... Actually, everyone is engaged in some, some kind of service. Somebody is serving their dog, somebody is serving their car, somebody is serving their cat, someone is serving their baby. The, cover, the prime minister is trying to serve the country. Yeah. Everyone is engaged in some kind of service. But what is sanatan dharma? Sanatan dharma, that is service to the Supreme Lord. That is the eternal service. So sometimes I was in I was in Tirupati one time and one man, there was one other sadhu there and he saw me. I was dressed as a devotee, he could see I was a Hare Krishna. And he said to me, he said, You think you think you can serve God? He said, You think you can serve God? He said, what do you have to have? have what do you think you have to give to God? Of, of course, I said to him, but you're trying to become God. And he said, look, look, look at your position. What is your position? I'm just trying to serve God. I know it's not easy to be a servant of God, but you're trying to become God. Look at your position. And so, actually, when we offer service to God, we should understand it is not our offerings which the Lord wants. Although in the Bhagavad Gita he says, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhakja Prayacha. He said, You can offer me a leaf, a flower, a fruit, and some water. Very simple. Does he, does he need our thing? Does he need our fruit or our flowers? He has many, many countless numbers of goddesses of fortune, Lakshmis, who are all serving him in the spiritual world. And they can give much better fruit and flowers than we have here. You know, in the, in the, in the spiritual world, they have Parijata flowers, wonderful aromatic flowers. You know, what flowers do we have here? The, which, which, the, these flowers, the Parijata flower, it, it, the aroma is so great that when Krishna brought the Parijata flower from heaven down to this earth planet, even the drones of bees from the heavenly planets, they came down to get that nectar from the Parijata flower. It was so aromatic, it was so fragrant that they came all the way from heaven just to get the nectar from the Parajata flower. 
So Krishna is not in need of our offering, but what he wants is our love, our devotion, bhakti. This is actually what we have to give to Krishna. This is the most valuable thing, the greatest thing we can offer to Krishna is our love. And we want to give that love purely. It's not that we say, you know, love me or else. <laughs> if you don't love, if, 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 you know, the, Krishna is not obliged. But we are actually, we have, to, we have an internal relationship with Him. And we have to develop that loving relationship through the medium of bhakti yoga by engaging in hearing and chanting faithfully. Then we can attract the attention of Lord Krishna. Krishna is in our hearts and He is anxious for all of us to come to our original consciousness pure conscious. We have fallen into this world, into this illusion of the material world where we identify with all of the different bodies and the different places which we're taking birth in here in this world. Actually we don't belong here. Our home is there in the spiritual world. And Krishna is like the well-wishing father. He is trying to bring us back. And for that purpose, he comes himself. He came 5,000 years ago to speak the Bhagavad Gita. And he sends his pure devotees like Srila Prabhupada and other great devotees. He sends them here just to try to attract us to bring us out of our maya, to bring us out of our lethar, our laziness, and to bring us to that position where we actually become his devotee and engage in his loving service. Lord Krishna is inviting all of us to the eternal party. Right? Parties. You like parties? So there's, there's the eternal party. The rasa dance is going on. Lord Krishna is inviting us. We can go there and join in his dancing party. Lord Krishna is trying to bring us all to this bank, to our original consciousness. But we've forgotten. We're, we're thinking, well, it's okay, it's not urgent, it can wait. You know, let me enjoy a bit more here. We have to, we have to appreciate the urgency of this life, that, that we're so fortunate to get the human body. And we are even more fortunate to get association with devotees. Because it's only in the association of devotees that we can cultivate this kind of consciousness. We really need to value this association and hold on tightly to the association of devotees. So Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, they are teaching us the business of devotees. To chant and dance and be happy. Right? We should be happy in Krishna consciousness. Even though there may be so many things wrong in the world, though the economy is terrible, oh there's no good jobs, Oh, the money has no value anymore. Everything is so expensive. Oh, but, but the, the, the nice thing is simply by chanting Hare Krishna, 
one can get all perfection and go back to God. This is available only in the Kali, in the Kali Yuga. There is no other way. In other ages, they could do other things. The meditation, the temple worship, the deity worship. But in the Kali Yuga, there is no other way. Only the chanting of the Holy Name. So we have to value the chanting, hold on to this process, chant faithfully, and try to understand the message of Lord Krishna by regularly hearing in the association of devotees. We come together, we chant, and in this way, we develop more faith. That faith is very important. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, acts of sacrifice, charity and austerity, if they're performed without faith in the Supreme, then there's no benefit. Even though you may perform acts of sacrifice or charity or austerity. But if you don't have faith, then there is no better. So we have to have faith. And why not have faith? We have seen how the Krishna consciousness movement has grown. If you go to India today, oh, the Krishna consciousness movement is spread so many places all over the, the whole of Bharat Varsh, everywhere in India. So much preaching is going on and so many devotees and so many centers, bhakti prikshas, namhatas, oh, wonderful festivals all the time, everywhere. The, the Krishna consciousness movement is going, growing, growing, it's expanding. Although we may feel, oh, you know, I don't see it growing so much. Actually, it's growing a lot. It's growing a lot. You can see more and more people taking serious interest in Krishna consciousness. His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami was just here recently. There's so, so many people came, right? When he was coming, then he chanted so many people. And so many more people were initiated also. And so definitely Krishna consciousness is alive and well. And it's growing. It's a dynamic process. And it's working for everyone. Wherever you are, in any position of life, you can be benefited if you take to this process. Sukadeva Goswami prays, he says, uh, he mentions about different kinds of sinful races. He said, Kirita, Hunanda, Palinda, Pokesha, Abhira, Shumba, Yavana, Kashadaya. These are all names of different races in different parts of the world. Kirita means African. Kirita Hun Andra Hun Hun that's European and then Andra that's South India right going towards this and and it finishes Kasha Kasha means the Chinese so all the different races the Turks the Greeks the Europeans the Africans the Chinese all parts of the world. He says, Yanye papa pa yada pashraya shaya sujyanti tasmai prabhavishnave namaha. They can all be delivered by the mercy of the devotees of the Lord. We need the mercy of the devotees. Just like all of us, we came to this Krishna consciousness. Somehow we got some mercy from a devotee. Some devotee came, somehow gave us mercy. Now sometimes 
We forget. Sometimes we drift away. Just this afternoon, this afternoon before I came here, I was helping the devotees in KL. We went to distribute prasadam. They had some food for life program. And so we were distributing prasadam and we happened to go to one house and the lady came out and she said, Oh, I haven't been to the temple for three years. <laughs> she said, for three years I've been out of touch with the devotees. Well, it must have been because of maybe like COVID, because of the lockdown, she didn't come out. But then because we were there, we were going giving out prasada and she came out and you know, she was reminded that, oh, <laughs> like that. So it's so important for us to, to show ourselves and to go out and meet the people and try to give them some Krishna consciousness, give them a mantra card or just chant the holy name. Do Sankirtan and let people see the devotees. It's so powerful for them just to see the devotees chanting and dancing. His Holiness Jananda Maharaj just came through Malaysia the other day and I had a few words with him and he was telling me about his preaching program in France. And in, you know, in France, it, it, the, the, devote, it, the, the movement had <laughs> some ups and downs, you know. In Prabhupada's time, it was going quite well. It was developing. The, more and more people were coming. And, and then after Prabhupada left, it continued to expand. But then they had some problems. So like the leader had some difficulties. And then because the leader had difficulties and everybody else got affected and somehow the preaching went down and it declined for some time. But then again they picked it up. The devotees went and they worked hard and they kept going out. They kept going on Sankirtan and distributing books and gradually, gradually more and more people took interest. And now, just at the Christmas Marathon, he told me the Christmas Marathon, they distributed 120 sets of Srimad Bhagavatam in French. So that was wonderful, you know, that, you know, it, first of all, it was very difficult to get the book printed. It had gone out of print, so they had to reprint. But, yeah, and then he told me, they said, well, the top book distributor is actually He's not a, he's a, he's, he's an Arab, you know, mystic. <laughs> the top book distributor. But you know, you know. And, and people, anywhere, everywhere, they can become Krishna conscious. By the mercy, of devotees. It takes the mercy of the devotees. You have to go out there, you have to be there, you have to be thinking about how to give Krishna consciousness. So take some books with you or have some prasadam with you. At least remember Krishna. Put some tilak on your face and let them see your nice tilak and chant the holy name to them. A Hare Krishna to everyone. Even Prabhupada was in Vrindavan and we were on a morning walk and so somebody said, Radhe Radhe, Prabhupada said, Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, be chased. Chant the holy name. Chant Krishna's name. We don't need to chant any other name, right? We have everything. Hare Krishna means Radha Krishna. So we want to give people, this is the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who inaugurated the Sankirtan, the Yuga Dharma. We have to take advantage. This is the 
the golden age in the Kali Yuga, just after Lord Chaitanya's appearance. Right. We're in the golden age now. It's is an easy time to become Krishna conscious. To take advantage. They said even the demigods are coming from heaven to take birth here because this is the best place to become Krishna conscious, to go back to God. If you're in the heavenly planets, you cannot go straight back to Godhead. You have to go up to the higher planets and you have to wait for the end of Lord Brahma's life. And Lord Brahma lives a long life. You have to wait for the end of his life before you can get out and go back to God. But from this planet, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, you can immediately go. So this is the mercy which is given to us by Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda. Who could be more merciful than these two great personalities? Only a very unfortunate person will not take advantage of their mercy. Alright, are there any questions? Any problem? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> when we are chanting Hare Krishna, there is no problem. So long as we are busy and thoughts of Krishna and chanting the Holy Name, there's no problem. So we want to remain like that. We want to keep it like that. Just keep ourselves always in consciousness of Krishna. It's not difficult. It's easy.